it seems like the entire internet is going to follow what I already had to say, which is Grand Admiral Thrawn is just blue Elon Musk. We are here to talk about Ahsoka Episode 6 because Filoni stands hate me and I'm going to keep reviewing every single thing that Star Wars does because I have to, I guess. Anyway, I've watched every episode of Ahsoka and aside from being boring, this wasn't like the worst episode. I don't have a lot of negative things to say. But I do have some curious, some questions here as to <laughs> why is Elon Musk the big bad villain of Star Wars? What is, what's going on here? A little confused. For those of you who are, aren't aware, see, there's two factions in the Star Wars universe. There's the extended universe fans who've been around forever, and the the fans who've been since I guess the beginning and have collectibles like Adats. And look, I have like original Star Wars glasses. You Filoni fans don't have those because you're you're Filoni fans. You're not Star Wars. See, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, okay, so you get it. So anyway, I read a series of books called Heir to the Empire several times by Timothy Zahn. And he created a really cool character named Grand Admiral Thrawn, who's a tactical genius. And we'll get there, but I have yet to see any tactical genius in Thrawn. So far, he's just been stranded. He's been lost in space. So let's get into this. Let's talk about it. And, um, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. But I don't think I'm wrong this time. So, live action Grand Admiral Thrawn has finally arrived. So let's go through the plot here. Ahsoka is sitting inside of a whale's mouth. That's a thing. And she's in hyperspace or something. And doesn't want to talk to the robot. Huang Chi, whatever. Okay, so we move on. So we take Sabine Wren, who's, I guess... So Ahsoka's not going to be in the rest of the episode, just just to let you know. It's it's Ahsoka, the show. She's not going to be in the rest of this episode. Not at all, okay? She, she's getting there, folks. She's got to take a little time to get there. So now it's the Sabine Wren show, because they have Sabine. She's in prison on a ship that I didn't think would have a sell but i guess it does and um she says you i I, we made a deal and uh there's not a lot of talking and they promptly take her from one prison cell to a different prison cell and um by the time all of this happens i think 10 minutes of the episode has gone past because they like fly down to the planet. They say something about like this is where space whales go to die. And I say, who cares? Okay. Again, I'm not saying this is like the worst episode ever. I just don't edit the thing. It doesn't need to be 49 minutes. Okay. The recap. I just want to point this out to everyone. The recap of the previous episode, like the whole series up to now... Didn't include Anakin. So I'm going to tell you right now that when Anakin showed up, it was just to jingle some keys in your face. So just accept that, okay? It's okay. You can like the show. I don't care. You can enjoy it. I'm not here to tell you not to enjoy it. I'm just telling you that if you're going to enjoy it, that's fine. You like things that aren't that well written. I like things that aren't that well written either. I like Metalocalypse. I like all sorts of weird stuff. I watch really bad movies. I love bad horror movies. It's okay to like things that are terrible. I like The Pit. I like Cue the Winged Serpent. It's okay. I know they're bad. But you just have to acknowledge that they're bad. You can like it. You just can't defend it. You just have to be like, yeah, it's bad. But I like it. 
It's okay. I'm, there is no Scarlet A's in this town. Anyway, as we go on, she, she got moved to a different prison cell. And then they bring her down, and uh, there's some, you know, there's some witches. They don't say much either. I don't know what they have to do with the plot. Darathramir witches. I remember they ride uh, rankers or something in some lore somewhere. It has little to do with Star Wars. Remember, Star Wars fans. Star Wars, not whatever the, this nonsense is. And I think that's the biggest thing to take away from this, is at some point I was like, oh, so this isn't Star Wars anymore? This is like some weird high fantasy thing going on? So anyway, we finally meet Elon Musk. I mean Grand Admiral Thrawn. And don't get me wrong, it's kind of interesting that it's like Thrawn, they're like all chanting, like Thrawn, 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 like whatever, he instills... Loyalty in his troops. <coughs> Are they clone troops? Are they real people? Are they conscripts? Unclear. The, it's also really unclear how long have they been away. Because their, their Star Destroyer looks like it's patchwork. Like it's a bunch of pieces put together. And all their armor is different pieces put together. And I thought that was cool. I thought that was kind of interesting. The guy, one guy had a different stormtrooper. Like, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Like, it's different. I, I'm okay with that. But give us context. Has he been here for 20 years? Has he been here for five years? Has he been here for 40,000 years? I don't know. You won't tell me, Dave Filoni. So anyway, Thrawn shows up and he's like, oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm Elon Musk, let's go back to Mars. Like, okay. And um, he seems thoughtful, like Grand Admiral Thrawn, but so far I have zero indication that he's some sort of tactical genius here, right? Because Thrawn's not going to beat you with brute force. He's going to outthink you. He's going to understand your weaknesses. He's going to exploit them. And I have yet to see anything like that. So I have no idea who this character is. He's blue. And he says he's Thrawn. But the fact that they leave his title out so much is a little disconcerting. So Thrawn's like, oh, if you have a deal with Sabine Wren, I will honor the, the deal. And I recognize you. Of all the people in this entire t universe, I recognize you, Sabine Wren, for some reason. It would be nice to know why. And if you tell me one more time I need to watch some cartoons, that's not my fault. I can watch any Star Wars and not have watched a whole bunch of other stuff and kind of get what's going on. Guess what? They explain things. In this, I have no idea what's going on. What I do know is I've read the books that the character was created on, and so far, it's not the same character. So you guys are in the wrong, not me. So anyway, sorry. I'm not trying to make personal attacks here. It's just when you get... So much hate from the Filoni stands. You have to, like, question their sanity. Go read Heir to the Empire and tell me that's not better than anything you've seen in the past 20 years from Star Wars. Just tell me it's not, it, the books aren't better, because they are, 100%. So anyway, keep going. They honor their agreement. They give her a weird wolfy thing, and... Off she goes, and nothing else happens with Thrawn. Thrawn is done. There's nothing. He's loading some things, and he's like, hey, Balon, go kill them. Now, I really do like, I will say, like, the character design and all that stuff is kind of cool. I kind of dig it. It's a little on the nose, because, like, I guess, like, Thrawn's people are supposed to be, like, Spartans or something. Whatever. Cool, char cool character designs, right? He didn't come up with Thrawn. So Filoni is not responsible for Thrawn. You cannot take credit for that. He did not create that character. So stop right now. But what you do have is um, I like Balon and his apprentice, whatever, Shin Hanti, whatever her name is. I like their armor. This is the first time I got a good look at it. They look like knights, but not obviously not Jedi knights. Interesting. Uh, he talks about like he hates the Jedi Order because they're weak and they failed and blah blah. Like there's no explanation. Like I, I like the hints of it, but you got to give us a little more. 
But I like their interaction. It's good. Ray Stevenson, great as always. I, you know, his apprentice is is interesting. She's dressed like Joan of Arc, but that's kind of cool. And then Sabine goes out on her wolfies and she goes and gets, you know, attacked by some samurai guys because it's clearly samurais. They're in like samurai armor. Don't, we don't know who they are. They're just some bandits, I guess. And then um, she meets uh, some hermit crabs. Uh huh. That happened. And then she uh, meets Ezra, the space goose wizard. And um, they hug. The obsession that she has with getting to Ezra, the fact that, like, Thrawn has said multiple times that she sacrificed her entire galaxy for this, you would think that she was head over heels in love with him. If he wasn't her dad or her mom, you would think that this relationship was something different. But they just, like, hug, and they're like, I really missed you. Did you miss me? So Ezra, the Space Goose Wizard, is fine. And he's like, did I succeed, and are we going home? And uh, Sabine's like, yeah, I don't have a plan for that. I don't think anybody does, unless they go jump in some whales. I don't know. I don't know where this show is going. I think it's departed from Star Wars. Like it, It's just no longer Star Wars. It's something completely different. People with laser swords. She uses a laser sword at some point, and it's not that interesting. Like The show is paced really poorly. There's some really cool visual stuff that's going on, but if you throw $200 million at a show, I'm sure I could pull off a homeless guy from the street and make it look good if you gave him $200 million. I mean, $100 million might go to methamphetamines, but that extra $100 million is still there to put into these special effects. So I think you could make it work. And if you got some cool actors, you, you could make it work. Uh, Sabine, I, I don't know what's going on with that actress. Like, I just, I just don't get it. She's she was mean to the wolfie. I don't like that for no reason. She could apparently talk to the wolfie. I like the wolfie. I hope it doesn't get eaten or killed or whatever. But she can't take the wolfie with her. I mean, what was her plan? Just to go and see Ezra, her best friend, her BFF, and we'll just like hang out together forever? Or are you in love with him? Like, just give us something. Give us character, plot motivate there's been plot but no motivation i don't know why anybody wants to do anything and at this point ahsoka's like pissed because sabine's making the wrong decisions i don't know man again not a terrible episode it's just not star wars it's something different i don't know what's going on it's certainly not heir to the empire grand admiral Thrawn commands a fleet he doesn't just have a ship it's not just the death's head by itself yeah Try, yo, I just, I, I've heard things, people who watched Rebels and watch Clone Wars and talk about like Mount Tantus and stuff. Do you guys even know where they came up with it from? Like, you don't even know the source material that Dave Filoni is stealing from. Like, watching Ahsoka turn from like Gandalf the Grey to Gandalf the White is not impressive. You know, George Lucas was influenced by all of this stuff. He didn't copy it. You know, there's a little bit of extra flavor you need to add to it. And the dialogue is just so, there's so much dead time of people walking. You know, people make fun of the prequels because there's two people walking into a room and talking. And sometimes they sit down, sometimes they walk, sometimes they stand next to each other. This is all of the walking without any of the talking. So, yeah. Again, it's not terrible. This is not Obi-Wan Kenobi, where I'm literally like, this is the worst thing. You can't hide a little girl in a trench coat and make me think that this makes sense and destroy canon. Like, at least this doesn't destroy canon because, you know, Kathleen Kennedy said the EU doesn't exist and that, you know, all these great Timothy Zahn novels are useless and have nothing of any quality to take from them. Except Dave Filoni clearly looked at them and was like, hey, there's some cool characters in here. So, don't know what's going on here. So, whatever, man. Uh, I mean, the only thing I thought about the, the actor besides the fact that he looks like Elon Musk is that he was, uh, we should lay off some of the donuts. That's for sure. 
you know, he's eating a few too many donuts for the character that he's supposed to be. But I don't know, man. You tell me in the comments below. Have I lost my mind? I mean, I don't think I have. I mean, I'm, some of you clearly will tell me I've lost my mind because this is, you're going to cry. You're going to weep about how this is the greatest Star Wars since George Lucas. Guess what, folks? George Lucas isn't that good at Star Wars either. The best Star Wars, like Empire Strikes Back and and for some of you, Return of the Jedi, he didn't direct those. It's a great story guy. Star Wars is probably the weakest of the three tri of the three in the original trilogy. And guess what? Some people like the prequels, and yeah, George Lucas learned a little bit. But guess what? Acting against green screens not such a great idea. Last point. I know I'm keep. I feel like I'm 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 just downloading info on you guys. The volume at times in here. So for those of you who aren't aware. The volume is what they're... Think of a really, like... It's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. It's like a green screen, and they can project, like, things in the background, and they can move the camera, and you get different perspectives. It's cool. It's If used properly, there were some scenes in this where, like, that entire desolate wasteland volume stuff is, like... It's a lot of it. Yeah, probably. Like some of the sets look really good. I love the way that they're, the ship that broke off of the big, you know, space ring. That ship looks great when it lands. Um, I really like the scene where where Thrawn enters. I thought it was really cool. I thought the 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 different stormtroopers characters that that all looks visually appealing to me. Um. The armor, like I said, the armor sets on Balin and his apprentice looks appealing to me. I get where you people are going, but it's not edited properly. It's way too much time, 49 minutes, and Ahsoka wasn't in this episode. You cannot, you cannot complain to me again because she wasn't in it. So anyway, let me know what you think down below. I know I went a little long this time, but it's the passion. Remember... These are original glasses. I have three of them. Would I can show you them. I have original characters. Guess what? Sorry. Chewbacca. Look. It's an original Chewbacca. And he just sits on my desk because he's hanging out because he's cool. Like, I just, I'm tripping over this stuff. And you got to remember, the original OG fan spent a lot of money on this stuff. I have a 3D printed... Millennium Falcon back there. We're into this. We should just hold people to a higher standard. We held George Lucas to a higher standard when he re released the prequels. People were dissatisfied about it. And remember, he listened. He didn't... He heard us say that Jar Jar Binks is for kids. We're not a big fan of Jar Jar Binks. He moved Jar Jar Binks on and didn't really have him as big of a part of a thing. So you're allowed to hold the people who do these things accountable. <clears throat> if they're smart, they listen to the fans. If they're not, they lose a whole fan base. Live stream. Check it out. It's every Friday night, we stream it here live on YouTube. Come join the party. It's a good time. We have some great giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff. You can get some digital codes. You can hear it. I'm linking it right there. <coughs> Excuse me. I also have, uh, it's on audio. iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Check it out. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. I really do appreciate it. I know it's been a long one. I had a lot to say because I really do care on some level. And I'm not trying to pick a fight with the Filoni fans. Except when you pick a fight with me. We can all be in this together. And we can all watch a thing. And try to make it better. And enjoy the things that were good about it. So, I am on to the next one. <laughs>